Hello everybody. Today is Sunday, July 14th, and the other horses are not out today. So you can see Aaron down there with his blanket on the dark black horse. If you look down there with the orange like boots on, if you can see that far, <laughs> he's always watching me. He's like a puppy dog. I can't really get to him anymore because on the side area, there is um, so much trees and brush and things back there but he remembers me when I used to come over there and feed him <laughs> I'm coming on here right now uh, to speak about the fruits of the Lord many people have been asking me about the soil and the cultivation of it and the Lord adding his nutrients to the soil and what do all those things mean and the Lord adding his nutrients to the soil. The soil is our soul, obviously, because of everything that I've been bringing through. That's the garden for our understanding of these things. The, the soil of the soul has to be overturned to see what's underneath, to see what, what we're dealing with. Do we have a hardened heart? What is a hardened heart? Um, how can you tell if you have a hardened heart? And what is the nutrients that the Lord adds to the soil to help change the soil? Well, let's first talk about what is a hardened heart. A hardened heart is a heart that does not operate like Yeshua HaMashiach and does not operate in the characteristics of Yeshua HaMashiach in any way, shape, or form. You look at it. It doesn't mean that you, you don't operate in any way, shape, or form like him, but just that the majority of the core of your person does not operate as like Jesus, the firstborn of the children of God, to exemplify to other children of God how we are to be as well born, born of the divine nature of God. That is the rebirth. That's the whole purpose of being born again. It, it is redeveloped again. Because we have developed into something that is not like same as him and is estranged or gone through a death process. So we die to that nature and that heart and that kind of a soul. That kind of identity and identifying with that and we're born anew. We are born into a new foundation being erected on the truth which is Jesus. So we have a new foundation in our souls that the Lord is attempting to raise up with us which is look at my son, look at Yeshua HaMashiach, look at Jesus the Christ, understand how he walked with the Father, understand how the Father formed his soul in the earth to obey the Father, go by the lead of the Father, and to only do and say what the Father would show him to do and say. That kind of a child has the truth erected inside of them, has the attributes of God being redefined or rebirthed and reestablished inside of them and is now going is undergoing the process of born again or or taking part in the working out of the salvation that we were given a salva the the salvation we were given is who we were given to partner with forevermore your your maker is your husband scripture says in Isaiah many people want to argue with me about who uh, Jesus is Jesus is not the father and the son is not the father Jesus is the Godhead bodily Jesus formed you with his hands the word which is Jesus spoke creation into existence the foundations your maker is your husband. Jesus is your husband. So I'm going to leave it at that because some people are actually throwing out the Old Testament saying that none of the New Testament apostles quoted Isaiah. So therefore, Isaiah 9, 6 that says that the son is the everlasting father cannot be true. 
And yet our Lord himself quoted Isaiah several times in the New Testament. He himself quoted Isaiah. Because we are to be formed after him in the likeness of what Jesus walked out on the earth, of which he was formed by the exact identity of the Father. The nutrients of the soil is the divine nature attributes, the character and the fruits of God that he seeded us with, with the finished work of the cross. But he said to me, how many are walking therein? You can be given a gift, Janet, and never open it, never assemble it, and never apply it to your life. Which is actually called rejection of the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. It's rejection of life with Christ, as like Christ, becoming one with the Father. It's rejection of the way. This is the way to do it. You listen to the Father. You submit to the Father. You are reformed by the Father. You regain the attributes of the Father within you. And that's the truth. You walk therein in the truth. Your true identity found in him. So the nutrients were given to us in a moment when Calvary was finished, the work. But if you don't actually apply any of your salvation, any of Jesus, he is your salvation. If you don't apply the lamb to your life and work out your salvation, you were given a gift, but you did nothing with it. You didn't even open it up to even try to assemble it into your life. And I say all that because he said, you'll know my kids by my fruit. And just like Terry Bennett came out with, his video recently at the conference that's taking place right now. This will be the third day of it in Tennessee. Our Lord has been waiting for a time period, a day and an hour where the children who actually are walking as he did in the earth would manifest corporately which means there's no showboaters. Nobody's trying to do any of this before the other brethren. They're actually about the father's business. They're attending to the father's business currently, which is to raise these people up into their true identity to, for them to receive salvation in full properly, which is to, in your soul, in your conscious man, first of all, having the Holy Spirit display to you and reveal what's underneath in all of your soul. In order to do that, he's going to work like those machines that dredge the bottom of lakes and cut the seaweed and it all floats to the surface. You're going through a crushing period where everything that's within you must be revealed. He told me 2024 was an exposure year. It must be revealed. Why? Because if he doesn't reveal what's truly in there in your operations and how you're acting, what your attitudes are, what your behaviors are based on your thought processes and the principles and beliefs behind them, if he does not show you your character... How can you walk in the fruits of his spirit if you're clueless as to whether or not you're walking in the fruits of his spirit? The divine nature that he seeded you with when Calvary was completed. So we're in the year of exposure right now. We're in the hour of exposure right now. And it isn't just for the sense of exposure. It's for the, for, for the opportunity to actually partner with God. Finally, have a generation of people who are not out there religiously quoting some Romans road to people and calling it a day when you're done, but they're actually discipling his kids. Because like Terry said, it isn't just the Holy Spirit in these 144,000 caliber Romans 8 manifesting children, the first fruits of God. They literally have Jesus operating out of them. You want to know what the difference between the Holy Spirit alone operating in a man and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father operating out of a man? A great big deal. A great deal. Because if Jesus is operating, then the king is in there, which means he has full dominion inside that vessel. He's able to do the work putting you back on the potter's wheel, reforming you inside. The spirit of truth will bring you into all truth. To walk therein continually, you will do as you become one with our Father, with the Son, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit, the whole Godhead bodily. You will have the whole God, Godhead bodily erect in you when you allow him to, to reconfigure your whole insides to walk as our Lord walks. 
Then he has a vessel perfected, which means whole in scripture. So now he's got a whole vessel. What does that mean, Janet? It means that your spirit has been born again. You understand that there's a powerful energy source that is you. And that powerful energy source that is you as a spirit being consists of a unique combination of components of God. And he calls them by your name. You're, you are a flavor of God. How he chose to express himself with you, through you, in you. And you understand that there are attitudes, that there are beliefs, that there are principles, that there is a character to a spirit. Now, if you're going to be a born-again spirit, you'll look at Jesus Christ and you'll realize, that is who I truly was created as. What Jesus is, is what I am. I am not Jesus. I am me. But he created a structural program within me, an operating system that he can slide right into if I align with his spirit and allow this dead spirit, which means estranged person from God walking not as he walked. If I allow that spirit to be revived and reborn again in, in his image and likeness, then I will be operating from my true identity, spiritually speaking. The next phase is to get your soul on board. That's the big fight. It's one thing to understand what spirit is. You have to understand that or you're never going to get the process to your soul. So you have to understand that a spirit is a powerful energy source made up of components of God originally in the flavor that is called you, whatever he named you, that in the flavor combination of uniqueness that he made you to be, that he chooses to express himself to the world, to you and through you and with you in, that is based in principles, attitudes, character, conduct, demeanor, disposition, etc. and so on. That's a spirit. That's why it's so powerful. It's why witchcraft works if you continue to use a dead spirit, one that's based after the carnal nature where Satan can empower too. The soul, the soul has to be working out the salvation. The salvation is everything you were given in a newborn again spirit. Now work that out in your soul. That's where your soul, which is your 24-hour conscious thinking, emoting, making choices, making, you know, willful decisions in your life. The child of God, the, the, the child that he's developing that is a first fruit, will decide inside their being that they want to only walk and resemble the reflection of our Lord Jesus Christ in their soul. And they will put all of their, what? Love God with all their mind, all their strength, all their soul, and put that effort into that. All the, all the power that they have, all the blood, sweat, and tears into that. That's when the Lord will come in and want to do house cleaning, which is what he's doing now. And, and the first thing that he does when he comes in to do this house cleaning, because he already gave you the nutrients, whether they're being applied to your soil is a different thing because of free will. Here are all the nutrients that I gave, the, all the divine attributes and the fruits of my spirit that I laid at the cross of Calvary. Who's partnering with me, right? You don't, you don't have to open that gift or apply it into your life. And if you do not, you will remain an estranged soul. Which means that even if you have a born-again spirit, your soul will reject walking therein in the truth in this lifetime. You'll still remain compromised and, and making excuses to uphold the carnal nature that, uh, that is at enmity against God. Free will is a very powerful thing to wield when it's wielded against God and against your true core identity, which is the identity of Christ Jesus. You're in him. You will live and breathe and find your being in him, in the truth. If you do not, you'll remain in a false identity. So thereby the, the nutrients of the soil, the, the divine nature was given to us at Calvary, but are we walking therein, he, he says to me. Because if you're walking therein, all you have to do is look at the fruits of the Spirit for one. Love, joy, 
peace, right? Long suffering, patience, gentleness, kindness, generosity. We could go on and on. Mercy, grace, forgiveness about what are God's fruits of, of his character and person. Are those fruits being displayed in your life? And I'm not talking about you knowing what those are and hoping that those are displayed in your life. He said, you'll know my kids because they'll walk in that when they have an opportunity to walk in something else. And he said, what do I mean by that, Janet? Let me first explain to you that I was not created on rainbows and, and sunshine and cotton candy and balloons. I was created, meaning in this world, um, the, cre the recreation of who I am in Christ has been created, recreated upon adversity. Why is that, <coughs> excuse me, why is that important for us to understand? You're not, he's never going to develop you into who he is in his divine nature he's never going to create that in you through rainbows and sunshine only meaning like all life is all peaches and cream and you get everything you want and it's easy because then you would never do anything about your not in alignment with him soul it, you would do nothing it would it would push you no closer to christ at all in fact, if you weren't doing any of that, you would probably be coupling with Satan, which is why your life would be super seemingly easy because you're not an adversary to him. You're an actual comrade whilst playing in the carnal nature, doing nothing about your soul whatsoever, becoming a trophy of his, keeping you in, in the prison of bondage to the carnal nature. I was created in this realm where I am now. I was formed. I was developed. I was established in adversity. Every foul, difficult, strenuous, stressful, adverse, contentious opportunity, situation, and experience that has been presented to me in this life through ungodly people, has established me in Christ because I made one choice. When I started to realize this, when he started to speak to me about this, it is because I made one choice. That choice, if we do nothing to come into agreement with the Lord and do a work with him, because you can't do it of your own, you have to partner with him. If you don't partner with him, you'll have miserable days. You'll continue functioning like this is terrible. Woe is me. Um, I can't handle this. Look at the people around me. They're, they, they make me miserable and they cause hardship in life. If you continue to walk in that carnal nature who will see from that perspective, you will miss the blessing that the Lord has given you in this adversity. Because what he sees is all of how you're acting already developed inside of you deeply. And he's trying to bring that to the surface for everyone to be able to see, to deal with all of the fact that we need to be reformed in our souls. So he gives us these opportunities in life, and so does Satan. Everything is designed, uh, even if it's the enemy doing what the enemy does, everything is designed to bring us to a space where things are agitated inside of us so that it'll flow up to the surface which is your consciousness to be seen and heard. Now, if we're not going to be in denial and we're actually going to look at our souls with objective, meaning like unbiased observation through the Holy Spirit, he'll show you what you've been operating like. He'll show you strongholds within you. He'll show you the ways in which the nuances of your person, behavior, will, mindset, perceptions, and your character is not aligned with him. He does this with every one of his children, but many of us just push that off. If he doesn't show you, that's the first step. If he doesn't show you by giving you a sit, okay, like the thing that dredges up and cuts the seaweed to bring it to the surface of the lake, that tool has to be applied. So adversity is the tool applied to the soul in this life to, to, to churn the things up inside to bring them to the surface so that you will see them and do something about them. 
So the one decision that I was speaking of that I made was, oh, I realized that the people and the way that they behave and the demonic strongholds that they have and the unhealed parts of them are there to sharpen me. They're there to dredge up these things inside of me where I actually function like them in certain ways where like, say somebody is rude to you, so you're rude back. Then you have the same stronghold they have. You have the same carnal attribute as they have. Someone screams at you, so you scream back. If the Lord doesn't show you the truth of these things inside of you, how will you ever see them to do something about them? And the doing something about them when you see these things. You know, somebody's bitter at you, so you become embittered. Well, the devil was able to play both of you. One swoop, one devil. He got you both. So the one thing the Lord's going to do is have to point this out, first of all. And then you have to say, oh, dear Jesus. Oh, dear Father and Holy Spirit. I see these things active in me. They are When, we, when you have what we call triggers in this world, those are unhealed wounds. Those are unhealed parts of you, which means not whole, not like same as Jesus, and imprisoning you in a stronghold, an open door. So in order for the doors to close, right, the kingdom keys and bind this and loose that, binding and loosing means I see this operation taking place and I want to bind that, I want to tie that up, and I want to chuck it out. It means you're actually going to do something about it. You can proclaim it into the spirit realm, and that's the first step. The Lord will partner with you on that, but then there's the follow-through. Like anything, we have to have follow-through. If you throw a ball and you have no follow-through, it doesn't go where it was supposed to go, and it doesn't carry as far as it was supposed to carry. It does not achieve hitting the target. Follow-through is incredibly important, and follow-through has to do with integrity of character. So he's going to come in and point these things out, and then you say, Oh, dear Lord, I need to partner with you because I see these things in me. And I'm not whole in these ways. So that's when you start to see the divine nature of God has been given to us from the beginning, technically, but definitely when Christ fulfilled his mission on Calvary. Whether we're partnering with him in our souls is another story. And does it take blood, sweat, and tears? Does it take everything you've got to do it with him and partner with him and don't turn back and be resolute? Absolutely. So it'll show you as well whether you have any follow through, whether you have any gumption in you, whether you can be resolute at all. When you say I'm for Jesus and I mean it, that's how you show it. He said obedience. You show him you love him by obeying him. So when he comes in to show you what's truly going on in your soul, to dredge these things up and agitate everything inside by giving you the privilege and the honor of adversity in your life, are you cursing things that come your way that are adverse? Are you complaining and you're bitter and you're murmuring and you're angry and you're upset and you're short and you're impatient and you're stressed out? Instead of looking at it going, it's not fun. I'll tell you, it's not fun, Jesus. But it, you never said it had to be fun. But it does have a job to do. And it's what it's dredging up in me is this, this, and this. And so now I can see these strongholds. So number one, I want to say in the spirit realm that I want to partner with you to come against these things and bind them up in my life. And so help me, Jesus, to carry this out. So then I realized that every time someone came at me bitterly, a demonic rage came out of them. Um, the way they spoke to me, the things that they did, the dishonor or the disrespect or the betrayal or whatever it was, the labeling, the gossip, the slander, whatever it was, I realized that that was there to test me in what I had developed of his divine attributes inside of me, his character being played out, the fruits of his spirit, because you'll know my kids because they will be disciplined. Those are disciples. They will be disciplined ones who in adverse stressful situations will still present my, my spirit and my attributes of that's how you'll know them. So is that a tough thing to hear? He said, yeah, absolutely. But he said, it's necessary for each one of you right now to be considering whether, whether when, because it's not going to happen during rainbows and good times. You're not stressed with anything. You're not being tried. The fire that we're in comes through situations that are not rainbows and sunshine, cotton candy and peaches and cream. It's none of that. What, how you're being tested in the crucible crushing that's going on right now to, to temper your sword, right? What is a sword? It's the sword of the spirit. It's the truth. It's the spirit thereof. So if you're being tempered in the sword, you're being tested in the truth and whether you're walking in it, living it, and have become it. 
resolutely. It doesn't mean you're never going to have a slip up, but it doesn't mean you're going to immediately hit your knees, spiritually speaking. And then you'll humble yourself to tell the person, I was just carnally fleshly right there. And I'll tell you what, thank you. First of all, let me apologize to you because I had an outburst. I was un, I was undignified. I was not representative of the king in that. I see that. But I'll tell you what, I thank you for this because it showed I still have an open door or a weakness or a flaw uh, in, my, in my walk out of the truth. And so I thank you for that because the Lord is telling me he will continue to temper my sword or temper the truth, test the truth in me in that way. So I once again repeated that same um, testing. Thank you. Because eventually what happens, what you'll notice, what I noticed in my own life is that when those things come around so many times, eventually you're like, dude, no, mm -mm, I'm doing the right thing this time. I am not engaging that. Emotions, shut down. You're not going to be offended by that. It doesn't define you. That person doesn't define you. Christ defines you. The truth defines you. It's what the Father, the Father and the Spirit say about you. It's whether you're walking with Jesus like same as him or not and whether he approves of what you're saying and what you're doing, period. Eventually, you'll get to a point where you have actually partnered with the divine attributes of God inside you, which are the fruits of God. So when you actually begin to partner with them, not know them, not try and convince yourself to do them or, or as the, this world says, fake it till you make it. It's none of that. It's that you couple with it. So in the past, he has spoken to me and said, you know, if they want peace in their life, tell them to partner with peace. Tell them to meditate on peace. Tell them in, in, to tell to tell themselves inside, what is peace? Define that to you. What should it feel like? Think about that. Meditate on what should it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it look like if it's played out in the earth? And use your imagination in the way that you should. Use your emotions partnering with peace. Step into it. It's available. And there's a spirit that carries it. His. <laughs> He's Jehovah Shalom, okay? So it's really walking the truth out with him. So when you realize love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, um, kindness, generosity, you know, all, all of the attributes of God, mercy, forgiveness, grace, all, when you, love, when you actually will partner with it, that, that means I'm not going to oppose it. I'm going to meditate on these things. I'm going to learn what that really is. I'm going to study. I'm going to use all of my time that I have to look at who he is in scripture, study, the attribute, it's not just named in scripture, but study what he displayed in all the situations when he came up to the woman at the well. What were the attributes of God that he displayed? Number one, truth. Number two, prophecy. Words of knowledge. Gentleness. But boldness. Love. Reconciliation. Unity. Right? Pulling her to him. And, and, and encouragement. And, and so much more. He, he's like, please. Go and read the scripture in ways like that, where when you see the good things that happened, how did it happen? What was displayed? What were they walking in in that moment? Because what they did was they partnered with God in some way, shape, or form. So in our souls, that's what he is attempting. That's the workout of the salvation. The salvation is him and the truth. And he's trying to bring you into him in the truth, which means that you're not going to walk in all that other stuff anymore because that's outside him. And many people think that they're in Christ. And if your soul is not behaving lockstep with him, agreeing that you are what he is and partnering with it, then you're not going to fruit that out because you're not even partnering with those fruits. You're going to fruit out the carnal nature still, which is at enmity with God, which is at distance with God. It's estranged from God. So this whole process right now inside of our souls is your conscious man, number one, conscious in this world inside of a body that can think, emote, and make decisions and have a will of its own and have beliefs and all that, which will be based on whichever spirits you're following behind that, that energy, powerful source that operates in attitudes and conduct and character and all of that. So at this point, we're in a situation where you're going to find out what spirits you've been partnering with. That's the whole process of we're going to go in there and we're going to agitate everything that's underneath or like the soil with discs and plows. We're going to turn it over so that you can see. And if you don't have the divine attributes in there and you find out like this ground out here that it's clay and sandy and it's really not good for lush, rich, sustained crop then you're going to have to add the nutrients to the soil, which is all of this has been given to you in Christ Jesus. Walk therein. 
So then it comes down to, I need to go with you and cultivate the soil of my heart, enrich it, right? Put all the things in there that need to be in there. And, and in order to do that, you have to be purged first. That's why you're going through the crucible. That's why you're going through this, this pruning and this dredging up of everything to come to the consciousness surface level of your mind. See your emotional outbursts. See your bitter, angry, rageful behaviors or whatever they are. See if you're rejecting other people. See if you're dismissive. See if you're gossiping about other people. See if, see if, see if the energy source behind you is negative versus positive and hopeful. That's the process that we're going through with him right now to pull the things up into the consciousness so that they can be dealt with because you need to, to work with him to purge it. You have free will to hold on to all that if you want to and continue in the carnal nature and he can't do anything about that because free will is made in his image. You have the ability in this lifetime, in this world to choose this day whom you're going to serve. This day. Notice that it says choose this day whom you're going to serve. It's because you're only given a 24-hour period. Yesterday's already gone. Tomorrow hasn't arrived. You only have a 24-hour period, which is this day. It's always this day. And in this day, inside your soul, who, who and what are you partnering with? So that way you, you need to know what spirits you've been following with, that are strongly tied to you, um, encouraging you and enabling you to continue in that behavior. God or the devil. And so you really have to take an objective, clear, honest approach look at your soul. But he'll give you every opportunity through adversity. Because, for instance, marriages that are not going well, marriages that are strained and stressed and arguing and dismissive of one another, not honoring of one another, etc. and so on. You either, you have one of two choices. Give in and couple with the spirit of adversity, which would be coupling with the devil. And what's given to you, you're going to give back. So if somebody's rude to you, you're going to be rude back. If somebody's angry with you, you're going to be angry back. If somebody's short with you, you're going to be short back. If, so if somebody is cutting you off, you're going to cut them off. If somebody's shut off emotionally to you, you're going to be shut off emotionally to them. That is, that is actually walking and strengthening the carnal nature with the fruits of the carnal nature. And we will know you by that because it will be displayed when, you're, when push comes to shove and the adversity comes in your life. Adversity is a gift from God to, to develop you into who you're supposed to be. It's one of those blessings in disguise. Listen, I'm not going to tell you that adversity is super, super fun, you know. You lose someone that you, that you love. They, they pass away from this life. They pass on. That's going to test you in a whole bunch of different ways. You're going to give up on God. You're going to become bitter. You're going to become angry. You, or, or are you going to realize you probably were tied extremely tightly to that person. And if you prayed for their salvation, then likely he is going to give every opportunity to that person to reconcile with him. If they're saved, you're going to see him again. So really, it is a, it's a matter of understanding that your desire is so strong within you that you wanted them here now, right now. You didn't want to wait a short hair's breath till you're out of this world to see them again. And you're having a little kid fuss fit about it. Does that sound hardcore? Maybe, if you're extremely sensitive to stuff like that, but it's the absolute truth. That's how he speaks to me. If they're with me, why can't you recover from this? You're going to see them in like the tick of a clock here. I mean, you know, your time's running down for how long you're going to be on this earth. You're going to hate me in the process. You're going to be angry and bitter with me in the process. Or are you going to couple with me and thank me for the beauty of their life and, and make it about them and not yourself, which is they're, they're not here anymore. There's no adversity coming against them, no evil, and they're not crying anymore. They're rejoicing in heaven. Oh, so, 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 such a difference when you'll partner with him instead of being the adversary against him, setting yourself against him. So he's got to show you the truth of what's going on in your soul so you can say, whoa, buddy, I need to partner with the fruits of God because what I'm fruiting out here ain't godly. That's the soul salvation. This is what he is. is, this is he says, this is the, the moment of the hour that I'm working on right now. And so this 144,000 caliber people, the Romans 8, the one who will manifest, be a manifest son. Was Jesus a manifest son? Absolutely. He was the exemplary manifest son. What did he walk in? Everything we just talked about. Oneness with the Father, submitting his life to him, not having any kind of a personal identity, being identified only by what the Father said to do and did. He was on a mission to bring the Father to everybody here. 
for them to understand that they needed to reconcile with him. And he did what he demonstrated or manifested the, the attributes and the character and integrity of the father, the fruits, the fruits to the world. That's your job. So if we're not walking that out right now, then we still have to come into that. We need to mature more in this process. That's the hour we're in. And so when he brings in the great tribulation, it'll be for that as well. It'll cause people to actually humble themselves, see the truth of how they've been operating, and come to the Lord to be saved for real. Everything he does is with love. Everything he does is with love. So perhaps today, instead of looking at your situations that are adverse, understand that those are there to develop you into the same fruit system in you that Jesus Christ walks in. So if you're going to walk in him, you've got to walk in all of that. I mean, you got to walk in it means it will be displayed from you. It'll not only be an operation and established in you, it'll resolutely be so, which means that you will have made up your mind that this is all I will ever be from henceforth, no matter what adverse situation comes along. And then, and then you're going to be tested in that because adversity will come to test you in it, to test your sword, to test what's a sword? The truth in your life. Is the truth really erected in your life? Are you really walking in the truth? And have you been reformed by it yet? And there's no shame if you haven't been, but get on board with that process. Do the work. Does that require you to actually discipline yourself in Christ Jesus? Absolutely. You have to partner with the Holy Spirit. If you will, if you'll be lazy, because he just, he's like, there's no way to mince this. If you're going to be lazy and not do the work, you will not come into oneness with me. You will not manifest with me because you can't even come into agreement and partner with me nor be led by me. So you will not be a manifest one period. The requirements are the same walk as Yeshua. That's the hour we're in. And so when these first fruits do come forth, it'll be because they have walked this whole process out all at the same time in a unified corporate <coughs> body. Very few, very few first fruits, like the first apples that show up on a tree. All season, they'll continue to show up, and then there'll be those stragglers who come in last that'll be the last fruits of the season. It's the same with us. All of this is taking place in the body of Christ. There will be some who have already come into oneness with the attributes of God. The nutrients took in their soil. The planting of the Lord is well on its way to becoming a mighty oak. And then, then there, there are others that actually still need to develop their soil in order for the truth to take They've heard of it. They can quote it from scripture, but it hasn't taken because the soil is sandy and clay and it's not suitable for any kind of, of rich nutrient sustained growth in their life. There's still too much death in there. Too many attributes of the carnal nature. So he's gifted us with everything that he has, which is Christ Jesus. He's gifted. So partner with him. Look at his life. Study his life literally work with your soul to come into discipline, to partner with the fruits of God, partner with the character of God, partner with God. He's your husband you're supposed to marry to become one, to become one, like same, lockstep. We have to do that if you want to be a fruit of his at all. At all, let alone a first fruit. And the first fruits are apostolic. It's exactly what he's been, the Lord's been having me repeat. And those that have followed me since 2020 know that he gave me a phrase in 2020, which Terry Bennett agreed with through his conference session that he had that I shared on my Facebook. That was from the, I think it was from the 13th, the 13th, whatever. It was uploaded yesterday, so... I'm not sure if it was from the 13th or the 4th. I think it was from the 13th. But he had said, the Lord is developing apostles. And why? The Lord just said, why? Because Jesus said, I am the apostle. What does that mean? I am the foundation bringer and establisher. So anybody who is first fruiting out like him will be a foundation bringer and establisher in other people's lives. 
not only will you already have coupled with the truth and been already walking in it and doing it with Christ Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit and the Father, but you're going to be bringing it into other people's lives but by any time you, you're, you encounter them, any time you speak with them, you'll be fruiting out the Spirit and you'll be bringing the truth to their lives. In 2020, he started telling me, uh, get ready, Janet, for a regeneration of an apostolic reformation to this adulterous generation. Adulterous means they claim that they're loyal to me, but their souls do not walk in partnership with me in my divine nature. The truth has not actually taken root inside of them yet. So he gave us the nutrients a long time ago. He gave us the fruits of his character, meaning all of the attributes of what he is and what he walks in. And, and he showed us how he does that. He showed us the conduct of Christ. Are we studying scripture deeply enough to actually look at what he was demonstrating in all the encounters that just his life alone had with people? And then take that further, Old Testament people, New Testament people, prophets, apostles, whatever it is, you know, the disciples. Are we looking deeply enough at their lives to then turn and look deeply at our own lives? Because hypocrisy is knowing and claiming, but not actually doing and being. So when we talk about a Pharisee or a hypocrite, that very likely is our own selves. If we actually just think that having a knowledge of the truth makes you a firm believer. No. A believer is someone who be living it, he told me a long time ago. So you take the truth and it, and it gets inside of you. You look at God and how he walked out on this earth through Jesus' life and everyone he worked with, every example in scripture. You study their lives. You watch their character and their demeanor. And then you have to compare that to your own life objectively so that you can look at all the areas in which are not perfect or whole, because that's what that word means perfect in Christ, right? That's scripture. How are you not whole in Christ yet? Because that's a gift for him to show you that because then you can say, well, now I'm going to partner with that. So help me God. And then you, you, you apply that to your life and you walk therein because you can. I mean, saying that you can't is ridiculous because with Christ, you can do all things. So you're either a believer or not. He's the one that'll strengthen you to do it. It's not on your, it's not on your power or your might but by the Spirit. So every single adverse situation that comes your way, an adverse person against you, is actually there to sharpen you and refine you and test you in what you actually have in operation in you. This whole life that you have been given is about one thing. Do you know God and have you partnered with him in this life? Is he in operation inside of you or are you in a self-identity still in operation? Do you identify with Christ? Is your identity of how you identify in this world in alignment with Christ? That's the corporate identity. That's what Yeshua walked in, a corporate identity. And that's what he told, taught his disciples and apostles to walk in, this partnership with God where everybody is partnering with the same God, same attributes, same fruits, and you're all going to walk it out. It doesn't mean that they didn't have any flaws or mistakes, but they repented of these things and they learned one sharpened the other, meaning one would come in and demonstrate one thing and another, if they demonstrated it in contrast, everyone looked at that and went, oh, dear Lord, I need to repent because so-and-so is right and they walked it out and I didn't. That's what this is about. So every situation you have is for your benefit. He said he's working all things together for your good. Do we believe him? Do we believe him? Salvation comes in steps. First, it happens to your spirit and you get on board with the right spirits. Secondly, it comes to your soul. And he's going to, with you, look at your soul objectively and very deeply like with a microscope. And if you have any other spirits in operation in there, you were given the Holy Spirit. You have a, a renewed spirit given to you. You can choose to couple with him, but oftentimes we still couple with demons. We couple with the, the carnal nature, and they couple to that. They're tied to that. And then we get bondage and, and strongholds. And so he comes in to say, I have the sword. I have the truth. Let's take hold of this strong man, which is your will, your soul in, in, your, in your person who's at enmity with the truth. So let's come in with the sword. And the dominion, 
the crown and the sword and the scepter, and let's lay down the truth in your life and walk therein. If you'll do that, if you'll be conformed to my image inside your soul and agree to walk out my attributes with me, empowering you and partnering with you, then you'll see the salvation of your soul. Then you will have the truth to bring to other people. Then you'll have the pure witness to bring to the other people. Then you'll have the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father to bring to the other people. And signs, miracles, and wonders will follow you because now you're living in the truth. And the planting of the Lord has taken in your soil because now you have the proper soil, the good soil, and you'll grow into a mighty oak of righteousness with the Lord. This is the process. And the 144,000 or those that will go through the great tribulation process manifesting with the people, a lot of them will be martyred. I mean, so a lot of people want to talk about, um, no, we're going to have these immortal bodies and stuff like that. Um, listen, there's a difference between an immortal body and a resurrected body. And if any of you thinks that not being a martyr, a physical martyr is not one of the highest um, honors that you can do with God, you would be mistaken. Because when you'll allow yourself to be a physical martyr like Stephen, the Lord will come and show himself to you right before you're about to die in the physical and there's no pain. There's where no death, where's your sting? So you're smiling as you go out and then a burst of absolute dominion ruling love hits the realm down here when you're taken out. It's like God releases from you this burst of power and then many, many people end up coming to the Lord because of what you witnessed in the face of adversity. Many of the 144,000 will go through that. And I'll tell you what, I told him before, if you need to use me as a martyr, go ahead and do it because the two witnesses come back to life three days later, just like Jesus. So I don't care what you have to do if you're even going to have me and use me during that great tribulation. But, I, but what I desire, which I believe is in alignment with you, is to be used for as long as I can in the way that you want me to on this earth. If he wants me to have an immortal body, I'll have an immortal body that can't die. But if he wants me to have a resurrected and glorified body that's different, it can still be killed and it can be used for great use. So many people want the the um, the glory, but they don't want the guts and the glory of being a hundred forty four thousand martyr. It's not he he goes that's not going to be popular. <laughs> Again, why why do you even want to be a hundred forty four thousand person, if not to lay your life down for Christ and the mission and the brethren? Why unto the great harvest? Why do you want to be a hundred forty four thousand? I actually just want to wash his feet and serve him and do what he did, which was he came into this world not to live his best life ever, though he did. He used it to the best quality he could have. He laid it down. I'm here to lay my life down to the Lord to be used in whatever capacity he needs. The manifest kids already know this. They've already agreed with it, and they already see the beauty and the logic, the divine logic of all of it. And they actually want to walk out like, like same as our Lord. That's, there is very few people that are going to be first fruit, fruits that will do this with him, that are pioneering apostles. Whether you've been ordained an apostle in this world doesn't matter. Are you found, founded on the cornerstone in the right identity, which is a corporate one in Christ? You don't even have an identity anymore. You've slayed the carnal nature. You're only displaying the fruits of the Spirit. You're, you've married the husband, your maker. You, the two of you have become one, and you're demonstrating the, wit, the true witness of Christ to the world right now. On mission, laying your whole life down to live not your best life ever, but his to the world. That is 144,000 person. And much is still required of us to come into maturity about that. And he said, that's why I'm detailing through your life the process of how you get there. You have to die to yourself, to your mission, to your desires, meaning your own mission, your own desires in this world, and wanting to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. You have to die to all of that, and you have to live the corporate identity found in Christ Jesus. That's a first fruit. Those are the first to develop into maturity. Those are the pioneering first fruits. Many other fruits will come in. Many, 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 many fruits develop on a tree within a season. Tis the season we're in. We're in the season of 
God ushering in the greatest harvest of humanity during the most adverse situations and time period, which is there to give you an opportunity to be developed in your salvation and to come all the way through the fire being saved, enduring to the end and be saved. That's the hour we're in. And these videos are to bring forth the process to you so that you can partner with him, so that you can determine inside your soul why you want to do what you want to do. Is it for your own reasons or have you laid your life down in whatever capacity, completely, completely at peace with whatever he asks of you and needs of you? Absolutely no reservation about having to be murdered in any way, shape or form, because really you're going to accomplish a lot with the Lord, even if you go through a murdering. I mean, he did. He was murdered. Are we a son following after him or not? So whatever he chooses to use us for, that's unto his glory and unto the true witness of Christ in, in the earth. What's that? One who will lay down, you know, what? There's no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. So why do we want to be a 144,000 caliber person? Is it only so that we can walk in the glory of the Lord and, and do signs, miracles, and wonders and think that we're never going to have to face adversity at all in any of that? Because that's not the life that Christ lived. And it would be an impure motive because you don't want the guts and the glory. Your guts spilling out. The guts or the truth of, of why we will even manifest. He's asked me to bring this forth today so that we understand that adversity is an actual blessing in disguise and it has a purpose, which is to develop you into Christ's image. But if we're going to keep looking through a negative carnal lens that you will see every hardship he's ever put in your life as just that, woe is me, man, this is hard. I'm being crushed left, right, and center, and I don't know if I can endure any more of this. And why me, God? Why this? And he's like, didn't you ask to be conformed into my son's image? And I picked you for that since before the foundation. Why are you complaining about any of this? This is actually to show you what's inside your soul so that you can partner with me. You're actually supposed to find joy inside of persecution. Because then you know you're doing something right and you're displaying what Christ displayed, which was the truth and walking therein. The enemy's going to hate you and then he's going to show you he hates you, which then shows you you're in alignment with the Lord. When someone betrays you or rejects you, rejoice. Rejoice. Because you have walked with the Lord. You've walked in the truth. You've displayed his fruits to them. And just like the Pharisees of that time could not see Christ walking and talking in front of them, it's like same. So now you're at oneness with him and sharing in his sufferings. We, ha we have to be seeing through spiritual eyes and have the spiritual understanding of what the Lord is doing in our lives. Doesn't mean it's easy. Doesn't mean you're going to have fun with it. But you, but you can enjoy it. You can have the joy of the Lord to understand this process. And really go deep inside why you want to be a manifest son. Is a manifest son will will show to the world the Christ personality, the Christ fruits. You'll know them because they'll fruit out what he is. It'll come out of them. You'll see it on their faces, in their smiles, in their facial expression, their body language, that you'll see it in the time, the dedication. They'll they'll sow financially into your life. They'll be there for you. They'll give the shirt off their back. They'll bring the truth to you in love. They'll, they'll support and encourage you. They'll be patient and long-suffering with you. Very kind, very generous. You will know his fruited, his first fruited children, those who have come through this whole process, having their sword tempered, having their truth tested in them. You'll know those because their his fruits will show up. You'll know them by their fruits. Either way, you'll know the carnal Christians by what they're fruiting out in their actions, words, facial expressions, body language, behaviors, attributes, demeanor, disposition, and you'll know God's by the same. And this is what he asked me to bring forward today. And Father, my hope is that we have spoken all that you wanted me to speak forth and you're telling me that I have. And so my prayer is this, Father, may the people who are walking this out with you already. May you bless them even more. May your face shine upon them. 
May you bring them even deeper and closer to you and help them to ascend the mountain even higher. May you broaden their tent pegs, stretch them out further so that their reach within the earth is prosperous unto your will. And to those that need to repent and come into this and do the work, Father, I still pray that you will bless them, encourage them, support them, and help them because with Christ, everything is possible and you'll strengthen them to do this. May you help them to partner with every attribute they find in Scripture that you ever displayed and walked out in who you are. May they look through the 365 titles and names that is God to really study them and ask themselves objectively if that has been erected inside of them. May the cornerstone, may the foundation of what you are be established in them because upon that being established in them, the rest of the house you'll build in their temple will be based on that cornerstone. And I love you, and I love them.